Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to the event today. Um, let's just do some technical stuff before we get started. Um, while you are um, entering the room, um, the virtual room, why don't you let me know in the chat where you're tuning in from and if you've ever made fish cakes before. I make these almost all the time, but I'm tuning in from Brooklyn, New York. I'm Kat, hi. Um, I'll reintroduce myself once everyone's here, but yeah, let me know where you're tuning in from. Hi, Art, um, in the chat. And if you've made fish cakes before, because that's what we're making today. So maybe, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Um, let me try to see if I can get this live streaming on Facebook while everyone is coming into the room. Um, this might like not be what I want to do. Share to your page. Hmm. No, I actually don't think I can live. Oh, yes, I can. All right, I can live stream from uh, your homepage. Um, anyway, um, for those of you who are just coming in, we're just getting started. I'm, I'm just doing some technical, uh, technical fun things right now with Facebook because we're live streaming very soon. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. And in the meantime, let me know where you're coming from uh, in the chat. Hi looking through to see who's here before. We're making fish cakes today. So if you want, tell me yes or no, have you made them? No to fish cakes. Okay, that makes sense because you're learning how to make them today. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna guess none of you are yeses. Hi, Lena from New York City. We're probably, I bet we've passed each other in the street. So if you ever see me, say hi. Um, ooh, the ground salmon. I feel like Edward, I've seen you in this room before. The ground sockeye salmon is one of my favorites. Hello, Irving, again. Um, all right, let's just wait another couple minutes because I know a lot of people signed up for this and I uh, just want to make sure everyone gets in here before we get started. Um, for those of you who are just joining, let me drop in the chat where you're tuning in from and if you've made fish cakes before. Salmon cakes a lot. Uh, nice. I know salmon cakes, I think are, I usually make salmon cakes more than white fish cakes, Kathleen. Um, they're my go-to for sure. Um, all right, so I am live streaming on Facebook, Sanana. Sanana is my co-host here. And let me see if I can transfer host duties to you. Thanks everyone for just bearing with this every, the first few minutes of uh, every event here. Uh, let's see. Okay, you are now officially the host, Sonana. Um, all right, I think I'm ready to get started now. So we can start talking seafood, crab cakes. Virginia and crab cakes go together really well, David. <laughs> As you know, I'm sure. Um, all right, so hi everybody, I am Kat. I'm part of the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. And today we are making fish cakes, uh, salmon cakes, salmon patties whatever you want to call them. Um, I don't really know if there's a difference between a patty and a cake, um, but I'm sure that's what the thong is all about. And I've just never understood it before. So <laughs> um, before we get to that, we um, just have housekeeping as usual. If you want to follow along with captions, you can do that at the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that gives you that option or one that says more with three dots and it'll just be a little drop down menu. Um, if at any point you have questions during the event, um, ask that in the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. That'll help my um, co-hosts and moderators field the questions to me. Uh, make sure we don't miss them. Um, and if you're more interested in the white fish cakes, well, good. It's okay, because we can make these fish cakes with any fish. Um, and then lastly, if you need to leave before today's event is over, uh, we'll send a link in the next day or so to your inbox. Um, but since we're live streaming on Facebook, you can also catch the rest of the event as soon as we finish this one. So um, we're joined by a couple of my teammates from the member experience team today. Um, if they wanna come onto camera to say hello, um, we've got Sanana and Melissa um, here. Hello, 
Thanks for being here and taking care of all of us. Um, so they'll both be here today to help answer your questions. Um, you're in very good hands um, as usual, but um, let's uh, talk fish cakes a little bit. So uh, I mentioned that you can, I briefly mentioned that you can make this recipe with any species of fish, uh, sockeye, coho, any type of white fish, um, rockfish, halibut, cod, doesn't really matter. Um, and even, I wouldn't use this method for crab cakes because those are like a little more delicate. Also taking the crab out of the shells, if you've ever gotten the dungies, like I just want to eat it as soon as I take it out of the shells. So I would save this particular recipe for fish. Um, it's a really, really good recipe for um, leftover fillets, or even fillets that you've overcooked. Um, so if you've ever, you know, left the fish in the oven or on the pan for a little too long and you find that it's not really something you're looking forward to eating, um, you can use this recipe to make it something that you actually are looking forward to eating. Um, it's a, just a great way to transform any fish that's already been cooked. Um, so uh, we're gonna do actually two different cooking methods today, just because I think I have enough time to do that. We're gonna bake them, which is the easiest, most hands-off way. You can make a whole tray of fish cakes with unlimited amounts of fillets and um, just have like, basically bake them like a sheet of cookies. Um, and it's super easy in one go. You don't have to do any flipping. Another method that we're gonna do today is actually a really quick pan sear or pan fry. We're not really searing it at high temperatures, but we're just gonna pan fry it in a little bit of oil. Um, the, this is my go-to method because they get crispy, but you can only make a little bit at a time. Um, so I think it's a, a great way to have fish cakes in like a very much more immediate way. Um, if you have an air fryer, you can also make fish cakes in there, but I don't have my air fryer with me today, so we're not gonna do that. Um, I would say if you're pan, sear, pan frying or air frying fish cakes, it'll take less than 10 minutes, baking um, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, uh, depending on how hot your oven is. So that's something to keep in mind as well, um, how much time you have and how involved you wanna be in the cooking process. Either way, pretty fast, pretty easy. So um, one thing I really love about fish cakes is they are freezable. So, um, after, you know, you make, you make a filet of fish, you turn it into fish cakes, you can put it right into the freezer and have it for another day. Um, it's totally safe to do that. I know that sometimes people have questions about, can you refreeze food that's already been heated or reheated? Absolutely. Um, so these can be either refrigerated or frozen for another day. Um, and that really can come in handy if uh, you just want to have something ready prepped so that you don't have to cook, pop it into the toaster oven, or if for some reason you just made too much fish and want to make sure it doesn't go bad, put it in the freezer. So um, really easy to make, can be made, used so many ways. Um, this recipe itself, or the recipe itself, is featured in our Live Better Wild meal plan. Um, it's also been on our blog for a while because it's one of, I think, the quintessential recipes to make if you love seafood. Um, if you don't know what the meal plan is, it's a four-week meal plan that the recipe team put together at the beginning of the year, um, sort of inspired by the new year to help you eat more seafood more often. Um, I know it's almost February, we're about a week away, but I think it's always a great time to set yourself up to have a better time by eating more seafood. So, um, or more of what you want to eat. And hopefully that's wild caught seafood from Alaska. So uh, Sanan is gonna drop a link in the chat for that. I feel like some of you already have the meal plan. So sorry to have to repeat this every time, but I'm glad you're here again. So um, basically if for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a downloadable cookbook, a mini downloadable cookbook with about four weeks of recipes and a weekly email reminder um, so you can stay inspired and stay cooking. So um, this is the fourth week that we're doing Live Better Wild during our live events, and it's the last recipe from the meal plan that we're featuring as a live event. So um, definitely stay with us. So for next week, because we were going to do something different. Um, it's what I like to refer to as our back to basics um, 
I guess, cooking demonstration or event. I, I think the official title is Easy Ways to Eat More Seafood. We sort of change it up every now and then. But um, what I'll do next week is I'll show you a full show you a foolproof way to cook fish. Um, it's just as a hint, it's how we cooked it last week, um, but with a, my go-to mix of ingredients. So it's just like a no recipe recipe. Um, and if you haven't been to one of those before, it's great. It covers all of the basics that I think make it super easy to cook seafood. So, um, you know, even if you think you're a pro, uh, I highly recommend it, coming to at least one of those. Um, and if you're new to fish, then it's a can't miss, like you have to come. So um, all right, enough yapping, Kat. Let's get to the food. Um, I'm going to turn to my other camera, Sanana, if you want to flip around here um, or, or pin that um, overhead view. Perfect. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is my setup for um, what I'm putting in my fish cakes today. I've got a couple of fillets of, these are sockeye, but like I said, you can use any fish. Um, a little bit of like crunchy, colorful things that we're going to mix into the fish cakes. So in this case, I've got some red pepper, um, parsley, red onion, a little bit of garlic right here on the side. Um, and so these are sort of the fresh ingredients that are going in. We're also going to add some mayo, mustard, and panko breadcrumbs. You could use regular breadcrumbs. I just like these because they're like extra crunchy and, and um, coarse. Uh, and I think it makes things nice and fluffy. Uh, these are all going to come together in a bowl with the help of an egg. So um, let me go ahead and get this process started so that we can get these into the oven. All right, so I've got a mixing bowl here and we're just gonna get a little, little messy, not too, not too bad. Um, what I like to do is just flake the salmon right into the bowl. These are really big chunks, but let me just get the skin off right now. Um, anytime you're cooking salmon, I would definitely suggest leaving the skin on, even if you don't plan on eating it at the end. Like, I'm probably not going to eat that, but there's a dog in the room, so I will give this to him after uh, we're done here. Um, this is also going to go in. like that. And let me just wipe my hands up really quickly over here. To this, we're going to go ahead and flake it with a fork. You could break it up with your hands as well, but um, I like to keep mine not, I, I like to keep mine like a little bit like chunkier because I'm like biting into a nice flake of fish, but you can also break it up so that it's like really finely, finely mashed. Um, totally up to you. So one of my favorite parts about this recipe is you have so much uh, creative freedom over how you want it to be. And that goes for ingredients as well. So even though today I'm using um, onion, like red onion and what else do I have here? Red pepper and parsley. You can change those ingredients to um, maybe cilantro and jalapeno and, and yellow onion, or uh, pick a different herb. If you don't have onion, try scallions, or maybe leave it out completely. There is so much that you can mix and match for this. And as you'll see, the main ingredients you want are mayo and an egg. Everything else is just like a bonus. Um, you can also use um, Greek yogurt in case some of you out there are not big fans of mayonnaise or um, you know, don't have any in the fridge right now. So let's go ahead and mix this with a little more combined. My salmon was already seasoned when I baked it, but I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt to get things going. All right, now to this, I'm going to add in my mayo and it's funny because actually this mixture that we're making right now if you decided to not add an egg you basically just made a uh, salmon salad which is something you can put in a sandwich i mean you know you know what to do with fish salad just put it on anything and maybe mix enough in here to taste and then you're good to go so 
Um, but we were going to keep going past the salmon salad point so that we're making fish cake. So you can already see this is kind of coming together and sticking. That's what we're looking for. A little bit of Dijon, uh, Dijon mustard. I like this flavor a lot with this combination of ingredients because um, it just adds like a little savory, zesty punch to it. Oh, yum, that looks so good already. And then if you want, at this point, you can taste it. Let's take a little bite right now. Decide if you want to add more salt or, um, you know, if you're using, if you're adding maybe like a dry seasoning to this, like a little pinch of cayenne or like a Cajun spice blend. Now is the time to test to see if you like it before you put the egg in, of course. Um, but we're just going to crack this right on top and hopefully not get any shell in there. Um, I had some hubris during that right over the bowl. And the egg is going to really help um, set these fish cakes as they cook, whether you're baking them or doing them on the stove top. So um, into this, let's go ahead and add, let's start with this and the bread crumbs. You can add um, this just a little bit at a time. I would say for two fillets, like a third of a cup of breadcrumbs is a good place to start, or half a cup. And basically, you just want to add enough for everything to fold together. So um, a lot of this, honestly, you don't really have to measure. Maybe the only thing to remember is for every two fillets, you want to use one egg. Um, but everything else, you can kind of um, go like add a little bit more along the way as you need. Um, you know, even even like things like the onion and red pepper. Um, the only thing that I will say or caution against is if you're adding vegetables in here, um, like onion, red pepper, et cetera, make sure they're finely diced or finely chopped because if they're super chunky, it's liable to break apart. All right, so that looks like pretty good to me. That's gonna hold together as a fish cake. So um, let's get messy. Let me move these salmon skins here. I have a baking sheet lined with parchment already. Um, and actually, let me add a little bit of olive oil to this first. And then to this, you can either use your hands or be really crafty with your spoon and make little patties. So I'm just gonna use my hands because I'm not that um, I'm not that good with a spoon. This is really I actually really enjoy getting my hands messy. Um, I know that sounds like very generic, but I you know how often do you get to like feel something so like mushy and fun um, like in your daily life? Usually I'm on a keyboard. It's like a hard surface. This is a lot more fun than than um, typing something. I can probably out of two fillets get maybe I think eight fish cakes with this size that I'm making here. Um, if you wanted to do something like very mini, you absolutely could. Like something like I don't even make a little baby guy. This, I mean, I wouldn't mix small with big because this is gonna cook way faster than these big guys typically. But I just want to do that to um, have like a little cute bite after this. All right, so I'm gonna leave the rest in the bowl right now because I'll save those for hand searing. But I'm gonna get this started. All right, um, so I have my oven preheated. One second, guys. I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees and um, these are gonna cook in there for, let's start with 15 minutes. Anyone have any questions at the moment before I uh, start doing a pan seared version of this? Yes, there are a few that came through. Um, can you use canned tuna? Um, yes, but we're at an event for Wild Alaskan Seafood. So <laughs> um, actually, if you're using canned tuna, there's a lot more water content in that. Um, and it also has like just a different texture. So I think that this basically this formula for 
um, breadcrumbs and mayo and an egg can work with any um, fish, like even canned tuna, even something that's not Alaskan. Um, but just make sure that it's dried out enough um, or like wrung out enough or drained enough, whatever, whatever the word is that I'm actually looking for, um, so that you don't have a soggy fish cake because um, it's just going to make it harder for it to, to hold together once you're um, putting it in a pan or even like when you're baking it, it's not going to get as crispy and golden. So um, any other questions right now? Yes. And then do you freeze fish cakes before or after cooking them? I freeze them after cooking them because if you freeze them before, they are going to fall apart. Um, so I'm just going to make, actually I'm not going to put it on here. I'm gonna make a couple more fish cakes while I'm talking, so we're moving along. But um, yeah, definitely. Oops. Look at me moving thing before I'm done with them. Um, definitely for after. So um, once the fish cakes are done, you know, in, either in the oven or these that I'm about to do on the stove top, um, that's when uh, you'll just want to set them aside to cool off um, before you either. You know, you can wrap them in, in like a little bit of like plastic film um, and then put them in a, a Ziploc like freezer baggie. Or I've even just put them straight into like a container like this, like this one. When I've been really lazy, I've just put it straight into a container and then covered it and then like eaten it within like the next couple of weeks. So, um, you know, the, the longer they stay in the freezer, the more they're going to dry out. Um, but the mayo and the egg and the breadcrumbs are really going to help these like stay a little bit moist, even in the freezer. All right, one more second. So I think that's the last time I'm washing my hands today um, during this event anyway. Um, yeah, any, I don't know if I fully answered that question yet. I think I did. Yes. And then can you use raw fish and just cook the um, fish cakes longer? Um, yes, you can. And the thing is, it's not going to be easy to do with the filet because you want the fish to be this sort of like texture where it can be molded into something. So in that case, you would want to use something like we have a, an exclusive member special that is available sometimes for ground sockeye salmon. Um, someone in the chat um, mentioned that they've made salmon cakes with uh, ground sake before. And those you can do without doing that like first step of cooking. Um, that's actually why I really love that particular product because it just makes it really easy to, to start forming patties or making little mini burgers or things things of that ilk. So um, if you were doing these from raw um, without having a ground sake, you would just have to mince it up on your own. Um, and that just takes forever <laughs> so, and, a, and a really sharp knife. All right, all the questions for now, thank you. So what I'm doing at the moment um, is heating up my skillet here. It doesn't really matter what kind of skillet. Um, I would suggest something that is not nonstick so that you can get a little bit of um, like a crust going on these. These aren't gonna be like seared, but you'll see they get, they'll get a little bit golden and crispy um, just like around, around the surface um, once they cook up. Um, unlike searing fish, this is just over medium heat, so you can use something like olive oil, even butter if you wanted to, but I, I feel like uh, butter makes them taste so heavy to me um, that I love doing these in olive oil. So um, I'm just going to let this heat up here until it's a little bit hotter. Other, actually, I wanted to talk about other ideas that you could put into the fish cakes. So um, I've made these before with um, like a Thai curry paste and used ginger, like minced up, garlic, scallions. Those were some of my favorite fish cakes that I've ever made. This is really a recipe that you can play around with um, as long as you have, like I said, breadcrumbs, mayo, or something like Greek yogurt and an egg. Everything else in it is like completely up to you. And like, I think that you should absolutely not be afraid to just like try things because nothing is going to end up tasting, tasting bad. The only thing that might happen is, you know, if you're not used to making fish cakes before, you might realize, oh, I should have added more breadcrumbs. But like, 
you know, it's still going to be yummy, even if it falls apart a little bit. So um, this seems like it's hot enough. So let's go ahead and add a little cake to the pan here. All right, that's a nice, I know you can't hear the sizzle, but it's sizzling right away, which is the sound I like for this. You can see there's some bubbling around the edges there, maybe. And we're just gonna let those do their thing for about three minutes of time. Um, super simple, super fast this way, but as you can see, it's gonna be a little more limited um, in a pan because it's only really as much as you can fit into the pan. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm thinking about batch cooking, I tend to bake these um, so that I can make, you know, four fillets at a time and then stash a bunch in my freezer. Um, if you are someone who is trying to eat more seafood and find that you um, aren't able to get through your box as, as quickly as you'd like, um, this is also an excellent recipe to have in your back pocket because um, it's just a great way to basically like get it over with, cook six fillets or cook four fillets and, um, you know, get them out of your freezer and like into your into your belly or like closer to your belly. So, um, you know, that's always something to think about. Like if you ever feel like you have too much fish, try this recipe. I feel like a lot of times when I am not cooking fish, it's not because I'm not eating food, it's because I'm eating other things. So, um, but I'd rather be eating something like this than, I don't know, popcorn. <laughs> Um, so when I have fish cakes in the freezer, it just makes my life so much easier for myself because that's actually, you know, like a, like a meal that makes me feel like full and happy, happy and healthy. So, um, I think I can get a little bit impatient here and try to flip this now. Probably could have waited another few maybe like 30 seconds, but you see it has some nice browning and like a nice crust on top has formed. This fish cake is collapsing a little bit, but don't stress about that. Um, as the egg sets in the patty, these are gonna hold together just fine. Even if you put something into the pan and it looks like it's falling apart, um, by the time you flip it, it'll be fine. Oh, I lost a little nugget, but that's okay. All right, let's flip this guy. If you think they're getting too brown too quickly, you can always just turn down the heat. But like I said, this is just over medium heat. Um, you don't have to be um, like really perfect with the temperature on this. Um, we're not pan searing uh, like a filet. So super, super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Um, the fish cakes are, these I just will eat on their own with like a little bit of lemon on the side and maybe some salad greens. Um, I for some reason didn't prepare any for this event, but just like this right over about like a bed of arugula would be so delicious. Um, instead, I'm just actually going to save these for dinner tonight and stash them in the fridge. But look how cute these are. Um, let me take a little bite here. All right, I used this fork earlier. This is going to be a really hot bite, but. Mm. I love pan frying these because I really, really enjoy that crust. Um, when you're baking them, because you don't have them on that direct source of heat, you're never going to get a crust like that, but they should pick up some browning and be like perfect for um, eating over other things. So let me see how my baked fish cakes are doing here. I'll just give you a peek at these. They're definitely not ready yet. Um, they still look like a little bit moist. Um, my little baby fish cake is getting close though. Um, so I'm going to check on this maybe in maybe five minutes or so, but uh, in the meantime, ask me some more questions if you have any. Um, 
If you don't have any, that's fine too. <laughs> There's one about just um, the recipe online calls for almond flour. Does that change the taste? Oh, um, it actually, I meant to show you this. If you want to switch um, over cameras, not that there's anything to see. I just feel like this stove is so ugly without a pan on it. Um, yeah, I'll use something like almond flour in place of breadcrumbs. Um, I would say that it doesn't change the taste so drastically. It will just be, I actually even like the texture more sometimes with almond flour. Um, it's like a, just an extra boost of um, monounsaturated fats. I forget, healthy fats, something healthy in here. Um, and like a, a really good gluten-free option. Um, I also often just have almond flour in my cabinet that I bought for like one cookie recipe that I made. And then I have, you know, way, way more almond flour than I know what to do with. So oftentimes I'm just using this instead of breadcrumbs so that I'm using it for something. Um, the recipe also um, in the meal plan and on the website or on the blog is made with celery, written for celery, but I tend to not, not buy celery unless I know I'm going to use the whole bunch because I don't like wasting food and celery always goes bad. So if there are ever ingredients like that, that you know you want to use or you know you don't want to use, this is the recipe where you can leave it out. Don't even bother, um, you know, making that extra trip to the grocery store. Just make it really easy. So um, I see another uh, question here in the chat for the best way to reheat them after they've been frozen. So I have a toaster oven, just a, like a classic toaster oven, not like I think there's like an air fryer toaster oven right now, um, but I will put them in there for maybe 15, 20 minutes, just like set it and forget it until they're ready to, until they're like deliciously smelling and hot. Um, I don't even remember what temperature I do for that, honestly, um, because it's just, it's so, it can be any temperature as long as it gets hot in enough time for you to want to eat it. Um, probably something like 350 or 400 is fine on a toaster oven. You can do that in a regular oven as well, but obviously, um, you know, that takes a little more time for a large oven to preheat for a small fish cake if you're just doing one at a time. Um, what you can also do is microwave um, the fish cakes. I think, Sanana, can you remind me if you had, you've microwaved fish cakes before from the freezer, right? Like yeah. I'm and they came out really good, especially yeah. if you have like a reheat feature. Awesome. Yeah. So that's a really convenient way. I don't own a microwave for some reason, which my mom thinks is crazy, but I live in New York City, so I have no space for a microwave. But um, the uh, you don't have to defrost the fillets or the fish cakes before you reheat them. So, um, you know, just straight out of the freezer into the toaster oven, the microwave, the oven. Um, I probably would not pan fry them out of the freezer um, because they're just gonna cook so much or reheat so so quickly on the outside or so much so much quicker on the outside than the inside. Um, but if you are just refrigerating them, pan frying is my favorite way to reheat them. So that makes sense. I feel like there's a lot of different um, you know, ways to store these and ways to reheat these. If you're refrigerating them, my personal favorite way is to just put them on a pan and, and reheat them so they get a little crispy. Microwaving is always an option, obviously, for that. But if you're reheating them from frozen, don't defrost them. Use the oven, microwave, or toaster oven. Awesome. And then if you are baking the fish prior to making these fish cakes, what do you recommend baking it at? I just did like a really basic bake, 375 in um, the oven for maybe eight minutes or so, even if they're not totally cooked through, as long as they've gotten to the stage that they're like flaky. Like I think I cooked mine today where they're like a little underdone for what I would normally eat as like a filet. I like medium rare. They were like a little more on the rare side. Um, so that was totally fine for this recipe. And I, you know, like I said, if you overcook them, also, great. It's totally fine for this recipe. Um, so yeah, with salmon, maybe six to eight minutes of, in a 375 degree oven is a good place to start, depending on how um, thick the filet is. 
if you're doing this with whitefish, um, eight to 10 minutes in a 375 degree oven should be sufficient and, and just cook it till, until it's flakeable with a little bit of olive oil on top. You don't have to season it because um, you can just do that while you're mixing it together. Amazing. And the last question was, what do you recommend um, if you're trying to make salmon with, with this for sockeye or coho? I have, I think, zero preference. Either. Either is fine. Um, I think if you are someone who feels like, if you don't love sockeye, but you'll eat it, then use sockeye for this. Because you can't really tell what fish it is. You can't really tell what species it is between the two, I don't think, um, once you've turned it into a fish cake. As long as, you, as long as you've added all these other flavors to it, um, it kind of just becomes its own thing. Um, but, you know, it's it's really up to you. Something with, something like halibut or cod, I feel like I can, there's a more noticeable difference in texture, but it's like, you're making fish cakes. So none of these really factor into whether it's gonna be like the best fish cake ever, or like just a really good fish cake that you wanna eat anytime. So yeah, either. Amazing. Thank you. That was everything. Um, well, uh, let me take a, another peek at my, well, I don't know if everyone got to see these fish cakes really well before I look at the oven again. Um, so these are the little, <laughs> little fish cakes. And that's the one I took a nice little bite out of already. I promise I'll make a prettier plate next time. I kind of just forgot that I wanted to have these with like a crunchy salad, but um, you could also put these on like a little slider bun, make them a little bit bigger and uh, turn it into something like a sandwich or, um, you know, it, use your imagination, make a little dipping sauce with it. I feel like these have enough flavor that you don't need um, any sauce for it, but go for it if you want ketchup, put a little pesto, maybe chipotle mayo. Um, all of those things are going to help you sort of reimagine how you want to eat these fish cakes. Um, because like I said, I make these all the time and I never get bored because a they're really fun to make uh, I like to not need to look at a recipe uh, while I'm doing something and b you can just mix and match things all the time so um all right let me check my oven and see if these are ready yet all right so what we've got now are my baked fish cakes um, they're pretty set. I think I'm gonna let the bigger ones cook for just a few more minutes, but my little my little baby cake here has some nice browning on it. And that's like, a, it's almost like a meatball, like a baked meatball. Um, and I'll just add that to my pile of fish cakes here on the plate. So fun, I, I love these little mini things. Um, and that's it. Now you know how to make fish cakes. And if you already knew how to make fish cakes, I'm glad you hung out with me again to make them. Um, any final questions before I close this out? Yes, last thing was if I get a lot of salmon or on hand and I usually smoke them, would smoked fish work for these? Smoked fish, I would, I would try it, definitely. Just, you know, you are familiar with smoked salmon, obviously. So, you know, it has a more intense flavor profile. So just keep that in mind with, um, with like what, what you want the final fish cake to taste like it might end up being saltier than you like. Um, I think that the breadcrumbs or almond flour, um, will help sort of mitigate that. And even like mayo I find is seasoned. It has like a really nice tangy, salty flavor. So maybe swapping that out for a Greek yogurt, um, like go for like blander things to mix in to sort of balance out that salt content. Um, and yeah, definitely let me know how that goes. I know so many options, right? I don't know if it's too many options. A lot of times people just like to know what to do, like the one thing to do, but um, this is infinite options. So um, thank you for hanging out with me. We have a fun special uh, that I wanna talk about before we close out today. We have Pacific Halibut Steaks as an exclusive member special 
that we're running right now. Um, I actually just ordered some because I'm in two weeks from now, I'm doing another event, a different event where um, I'm making Pacific halibut with a creamy peppercorn sauce. This is an event you can, well, not an event. This is a recipe you can make with Pacific halibut steaks or fillets. Um, when I originally uh, developed the recipe, I used steaks. So I haven't done it with steaks since. So I'm actually really looking forward to making it. Um, like I said, it's not next week's event, but it's the one uh, the week after, I think on the 7th. Um, if you don't know what Pacific halibut steaks are, same exact fish, just a different cut of it. It's a different, um, it's cut in a different way. Uh, it's bone in, skin on. So actually it stays extra juicy when you cook them. Um, I think you'll really like them. Just check it out if you have more space in your freezer for more fish. Um, and especially if you're thinking of coming to that event because um, they're just really special. So um, if you're not a member yet, we have a special offer for you. If I keep saying the word special, I'm gonna drive myself crazy, but um, become a member today and use the code LIVE25. You'll get $25 off your first, oh, it just goes to the homepage. Okay, let me drop a link to the halibut steaks in the chat. That is my fault for sure. Um, halibut steaks. Uh, okay, well, let me finish my thought first. So um, you'll get $25 off your first box of amazing fish from Wild Alaskan Company when you use the code LIVE25 if you're a new member. Um, and you'll get access to exclusive member specials like the Pacific Halibut Steaks, which I'm finding the link for right now. Um, I'll just send you the long, the long link that's not as pretty as that short one. There we go. Um, I think it's a two pack. Uh, let me know if that link works. Thanks for Thanks for letting me know, Nicole. Um, yeah, so um, with that, I'll give you a second to click on it because you should definitely buy the steaks. Uh, share some, uh, like next week, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite tools and pantry staples. It's that sort of back to basics event um, that I was telling you about earlier. Um, some of you might've been to that before. We were running that one in summer up until early fall. Um, so it might be a good refresher course, but um, hopefully you've learned everything you need to know from me at this point. Um, and if you haven't been to it, I really, really hope to see you there. I think you'll get a lot out of it, a lot more than you expect. So um, until then, live wild and thanks so much for coming. Oh, still the homepage. All right, Nicole, are you a member right now? Yeah, be sure to be logged in. Okay, I'll let, I'll let someone else take care of this. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. See you next time.